Shankara Karuna Kara Jagadishwara Parameshwara Shankara Namaste. Welcome, everyone, back to Saktang uh, this uh, afternoon, evening, actually, here in Mantis Sahaja. And welcome all who are joining us still via broadcasting for this, uh, this uh, special aspect of Satsang, where I get a chance to read through some of the letters that come each week here. And uh, there's quite a warm evening, so I've got a, a chilled handkerchief here. <laughs> it's a warm evening, so uh, if, it's, if, it's, if it's too uncomfortable, we'll, we may have a, a shorter session, but I'll go through a, a few of the letters and we'll see how we, how we get on with that. Thank you. continue to get letters from people around the world, which um, I've been very open to that because I felt it was a way in which we could connect. But as, as time has passed, um, sometimes it arose inside that perhaps uh, these letters, which many of them were very personal letters, it, they were continuing because uh, there was some seed in the mind of people that my problem is really unique and really different from what Muji is dealing with. And I say, it is not. It is not. Um, and if we each would listen to the simple guidance, you may find that uh, my guidance are like oh, one medicine for everything, actually if you really follow that. But if you listen on the basis of being a separate person, you will feel that your problem is unique. And it's a separate thing that needs a separate attention and all of this. And in this way, the personal mode of consciousness drinks a lot of energy. You may have recognized that it can make you very tired, it can exhaust, your resources and really plunge you into very, very hellish states. Not because they exist by themselves, but because somehow you follow these, these, this kind of thinking, which, which pulls your attention into deeper and deeper chaotic states, while trying to, while giving you the illusion that you're getting somewhere, 
and just becoming more and more uh, entangled in the mind's psychological plays. So I really do um, encourage and advise, stay in the mainstream, stay in the main arteries, don't go off in the little veins and capillaries of the mind. Stay in the main artery, in the heart, and you will find that somehow things become extraordinarily simple and clear. The whole point is to that your life must uh, was must be transformed from uh, from person to presence. Person is very much personal, very much ego identity. You see, presence is more consciousness, um, un, uh, un, unoccupied consciousness, not consciousness filled with story, filled with personhood. It's a very, very different state altogether, whereby life really is enjoyed at a higher state of consciousness. And the life is not about just enjoying, it's really of an inner awakening, an opportunity to awaken to the highest state of consciousness. Because that is your own self. It's almost just like mm, peeling away the first layer and you find a banana. You think, wow, it's a banana. And peeling the banana, you find something else. You, you keep peeling away till you come to the, in the, in the core of it is, is the celestial gem. You see? But you can eat it at the banana stage and say, oh, that was very nice, a banana, nice banana. But someone else said, no, look inside the banana, and inside the banana there is another thing. I said, wow, this is amazing. look inside, this is a, these are not the best example I can give, <laughs> but I think you get it. You know? <laughs> that somehow in the same one uh, press person, if you want to put it like that, as you go deeper, peeling away the person, the layers of the person, you're coming to the gem. You see, that, uh, that pearl of non-dual wisdom. All here, you know, in the same one, not that you're becoming somebody else. You cease becoming other, you see, and recognize yourself. Mm. Okay, so this one starts, oh. <laughs> Don't pay attention to me for a minute. <laughs> there you go, easy. Thank you. You can go on top. Dearest Muji, my husband and I, the Queen, I think. <laughs> my husband and I were introduced to you in passing on Facebook two years ago. We felt you then, but only now was the window opened by grace through apparent loss, enough to touch the placeless radiance of your pointing. So again, dearest Muji, my husband and I were introduced to you in passing on Facebook two years ago. We felt you then, but only now was the window opened by grace through apparent loss to touch the placeless radiance of your pointing. We sat with you via broadcasting through the May Zima retreat, and you put your hand on our hearts. At 63, I now see the pause due to the limitation of my spiritual personhood, and now feel the freshness and immediacy of the journey without distance as it unfolds. Thank you, thank you, thank you for putting holes in my boat and for being a river of grace for all of us. Floating in gratitude, Kata from Austin, Texas. Nice letter, isn't it? So we sat with you via broadcasting on the Zima retreat. You, you put your hand on our heart at 63, I now see the pause due to the limitation of my spiritual personhood and now feel the freshness and immediacy 
of the journey without distance as it unfolds. Thank you, thank you, thank you for putting holes in our boat and for being a river of grace for, for us all. Nice, good one. Uh, Kata. Kata. Thank you. Namaste, Muji. This question has bothered me for some time and I don't know who else to ask. Maybe I will be very, very lucky and you will answer it. I had a spiritual awakening a couple of years ago and it gradually it, and it's gradually been settling into my day-to-day -day experiences. Now, sometimes in very profound meditative states, I feel a deep immersion and recognition of the self, and as though I am at the cusp of rising to an even deeper state of being, but also this feeling of an overwhelming compassion and love for humanity. This compassion and love, I feel, is what keeps me from relaxing into an even higher state of consciousness. I am not sure if it is ego or fear, or just my personal dharma, but in that moment of meditation, it's like a magnetic pull of love to be here on earth to help others, and because of that, I do not let go completely, and I stop and rest in that compassion rather than pursuing a further state. I am confused. Is this even a problem? What is it that I am feeling? Please help. Thank you. Mantra. Do we understand what, is, what I read? Do you understand what I read? Yes. Hmm. I think it's worth again picking up my spiritual awakening a couple of years ago. It's been gradually settling into my day-to-day -to -day experiences. Now, sometimes in very profound meditative states, I feel a deep immersion and recognition of the self. So as, as I go in my deeply into the meditative state, okay, where is the meditation taking you? Does it take you to image or imageless? Who knows? Yeah? Where does the meditation take you to? Towards image or to imageless? Image. Imageless. Okay, good. Towards concept or no concept? No concept. Towards experience or more towards a non experience in a sense? Yes, okay. Uh, so now sometimes in very profound meditative states I feel a deep immersion and recognition of the self and as though I am at the cusp of rising to an even deeper state of being but also this feeling of an overwhelming compassion and love for humanity. Hmm? Now you ever heard me tell you a little bit about this? You, sometimes you may have seen one of the paintings I made some years ago of the called the yogini yogini she was one meditating she's meditating no state of meditation so i'm sinking deeper and deeper into the emptiness when suddenly what happens she hears music sound like sounds and music that is so touching the music is so sweet greater than any earthly composer could make. Hmm? This music is floating. Oh, oh, it's, so, oh, it's so powerful, so emotive. I'm feeling so emotional. But it cannot be me, because I am here to hear it. And as soon as that Clarity came, the music drifted away. So, and she's left again in silence. A little bit further on, what happened? She sensed the most beautiful colors, shimmering like mother of pearl and iridescent colors and 
greater than any painter, no Claude Monet or you know Camille Pissarro or none of these painters, Michelangelo, none of these painters, nothing can produce this beauty. No garden on the earth has flowers so beautiful and so radiant. Oh, this is so stunning. The response came from within her being. She feels breathless with this beauty. But then from within her being, a higher intelligence came. So how beautiful. But it cannot be what I am, because I am here to see it. And then drifted away again. And she's left again in her silence. Then came all these beings shaped out of light, and they're flowing towards her like this. And ah, oh, with such radiant smiles, and like they want to embrace her, and they're floating. Ah, oh, and this is this one is really strong. It's like they're these images, they're like they're communicating telepathically this love towards floating oh, just coming one she says oh this is oh this is amazing it's amazing what an amazing love but it cannot be what i am because i'm here to feel it and to see it and then everything And then, nothing. Now, sometimes in very profound, in, in very profound meditative states, I feel a deep immersion and recognition of the self, and as though I am at the cusp of rising to an even deeper state of being, but also this feeling of an overwhelming compassion and love for humanity come. Ah, oh, love, oh, humanity. They're so lovable. Oh. This compassion and love, I feel, is what keeps me from relaxing into a higher state of awareness. Not so easy, because one of the spiritual ideals is this love for humanity. My God, didn't the Buddha share all this, all this wisdom because of the love for humanity? I don't think so. Because of the love for what humanity is in itself, to awaken the self in them. Not just love for humanity. Human beings are not that lovable, <coughs> actually. If they are retaining their ego, what is so lovable? Hmm? It's because they are the self. And it's the, the radiance of the self that we love, but we don't recognize that. So this compassion and love, I feel, is what keeps me from relaxing into an even higher state of consciousness. I am not sure if it is ego or fear or just my personal dharma, but in that moment of meditation, it is like a magnetic pull of love to be here on earth to help others. And because of that, I do not let go completely. Something familiar? Yeah. Because, whoa. Oh, this is not letting go of you know some little of letting go of my dance classes. No, this is letting go of humanity and the love. How selfish if you choose to go higher just for you. This is love for humanity. Not easy one. Maybe there is still something also in us. I'm not being sure about this yet. Maybe there's something in us that feels I'm here to save the planet. 
Ta-da! Who knows? I don't know this. Why it should come up in this form? It will come in the form that is where you are. Any temptation, any sabotage is going to come through. They say what? A chain is only as strong as its weakest link, isn't it? It will try and find the weakest point to try and come. And for this reason, it is say that although we are all this, we are all this, I know this now. It's not a belief. And yet, why so rare? Why so rare it seems human beings awaken human beings? Why, if I ask you, can you name ten musicians? Ah, oh, you can. Huh? Ten great, uh, you know, sort of what uh, athletes, actors, doctors, even astronauts. Okay, awakened beings. Uh, Buddha, two thousand five hundred, six hundred years ago. Next one. Oh, Jesus, 2,100 years ago. Why do you have to go back so far? Oh, yeah, there was that Ramana chap, wasn't it? That was about, oh, that was only, that's pretty recent. But all your pop stars are still alive. Yeah, even the astronauts. But awaken, why so many? Why so few? Why so rare? We should ask, why so rare? Because the seed of attachment to the human experience, you see, to the desires, to the sense of the, the need uh, to be loved and the joy to, to love someone and to, to have something and to, to, to aspire or to fantasize and to pursue your dreams is so alluring hmm? to the human expression of consciousness. So, maybe genuine, maybe, why not? Maybe you were fixed on meditation and suddenly found, actually, actually, this love for humanity is where I should get off. That's my station. I get off here. I'll go to the world and love the human beings. And God has given me this great love to love everybody. And uh, bye bye, enlightenment. I shall see you later. I'll catch you up later. Maybe this is it. Just like there are people who feel, you know, um, they need to, they need to, to help God. Like he's disabled or something like that. You know. We are going to say, God, I'm here. I'll watch your back. We have a lot of fantasies, you know. So, my pull to love and be here on earth. Now, it may seem that I'm saying, like, don't help each other. That's not what I'm saying. All the time, opportunities come. Yeah? Maybe such a person, you know, whoever that person could be, and there are many, many, many. Maybe they're looking, oh, I'll finally come a chance to serve humanity. You know, I'll go to some far off country and say, because that's where it needs it most. And yet in their own village, people are asking for help and they we wouldn't give them one penny. So it's very inconsistent the way our minds work, you see? Sometimes, you know, help is being asked. Somebody asks you also, please can you give me a few moments to kind of give me your advice. And I don't have time for you. I don't like the way you even dress. But you want to help. Dun, 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 dun. Something far off that seems much more like an adventure. You want to sell your house and go and uh, to do it. And maybe that may be so. Maybe true. But also maybe untrue. But in that moment of meditation, it's like a magnetic pull of love to be here on earth to help others. And because of that, I do not let go completely. And I stop and rest in that compassion rather than pursuing 
a further state. Now, when your meditation is finished, do you go off to help other people? I am confused. Is this even a problem? What is it that I am feeling? Please help. Thank you, Mantra. If you go into your meditation and uh, you are at a certain point, and you feel, yes, 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 it comes up inside tremendous compassion for the world and so on, okay? Okay, you come to that stage. Go on. Go even to higher ground. It means that if you have to help people, if you have an even higher place you're coming from, even, why not go? Why stop there? Do you think it is God saying, look, it's enough, it's enough? You get off here. No, the opportunity is to go completely. Why not? Mm. I don't know if this person has seen you, but I feel for myself. I feel Could you come? Could I listen to you about the microphone? So it needs to be heard. You know, so yeah. And, but I feel being more in your pre I don't know if this person has been in your physical presence, but um, the, the devotional joy being in your presence has infused something um, that I felt was being depleted in, in my field with social work. So I'm just, I don't know, but I, I feel that this has shifted something for me yes and and, I, and and yet it's 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 it needs to it needs to marinate more and i'm um, making allowing for that so thank you thank you thank you for bringing that up thank you for bringing it up and um, i speak about these things and uh, i'm not being cynical about it at all because these things do happen all the time that there are people who come and uh, their, their own sadhana is not complete and still something is there and so on and have very, very strong views about something. And I say, no, in a second, let's take a look. Because uh, if, if what you speak is true, it will still be true at the end of my looking at it. And I feel just somehow in the state of looking and uh, you know, going inwardly, there are many things that are offered on the way. Many, many chai shops open on the way to Nirvana. Ta -da. And old friends come, ha ha, hey, long time no see. Yeah, oh my gosh, look at that. Listen, we have a party here, is my, you know, my, my friend's 50th birthday. Come celebrate. There's many things happen on the way. And they happen like this in all different, uh, different groups, and religions, practices, everything. As soon as you are set on completing uh, authentically and an authentic urge for freedom come, all these apparent obstacles come. They are not yet obstacles, but they are posing as obstacles, almost as though they are auditioning for your attention. Come, 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 come. And you will use the same things to, to grow from them, you see, to, to strengthen uh, yourself from them. Because you're not going to reach there just on you know, sucking lollipops. You're going to have some challenges, some, uh, some insecurities, some confusion, but you will work through it. And the best way is to just keep empty yourself of your mind for a moment and sit in the silence of your being and see that all these things are perceivable. They come. And when they come, they come with a certain strength. But if you don't go with them, you start to see that they collapse and they go back into oblivion. We are acting too early, too much uh, from what I call impulse rather than intuition. Something just quickly goes and so our actions are often premature. So I have to kind of push it sometimes rather than you, one may think, well, why doesn't he just encourage? But now sometimes I say, no, no, but let's look, look, look at it like this. 
and then gives you a chance to really see that, you know, maybe this could be the possibility. Why? Why did you write me about this? You see? Because here it says, uh, he's working it out also. You're working it out. Uh, so it's like a magnetic pull of love to be here on earth to help others. Maybe here on earth to help others. Maybe in your meditation, something tells you that, you know, if you go further, you have to drop your body. Isn't it? You see how somehow subtle things can come, you know? Maybe I have to stay here. Why don't I just stay here and help others? I have to help others. But stay here on earth could also imply that if you go on further, you may have to release the body. Because people hold these type of ideas as well. That to really come into complete understanding, it doesn't need the body. What's the body life for? It's just a waste of time. After all, it's only a kind of dream body. You see? And you may not just let the body drop because it doesn't want to drop. If it was authentic, it would drop authentically. It would drop off like some dried up fruit. But it's not, you may want to have to try and kill him even. We don't know. It is so, because I've come across so many different strands of this type of thing, you see. So I just tried to speak it out. And, uh, and I stop and rest in that compassion rather than pursuing a further state. So something knows that, not sure if this is the right thing to do. And then you finish your meditation, and what happens after you finish the meditation, you see? Do you still feel the, the pulse, the, the urge to continue and to go and, and to, to say, that I, I must go, it's like something is, something is waving me on, something is carrying me. Some I meet people, who are working for these organizations in spite of not even looking. And then everything seems to be dropping into place. This is how the spirit works somehow. When an action needs to be taken that seems bigger than you, you know, other forces come in to join to complete that expression if it needs to come in. And you come to realize, actually, you know, it, is, uh, it, it must be true because so, many, so much support is coming. Or is it that you're pushing in your own strength? You're trying to convince yourself too much, which is, becomes more mental. Do you yet have that sufficient discernment to say, it is this rather than that? And if not, you'll be developing greater discernment as you go. Do we follow my point? You want to say something, you please? Thank you so much. Thank you. I've not come forward before because I've benefited so much for over three years now from all these questions from yes. everybody. Now I can very strongly relate to this mm -hmm. and also your appeal to come forward to ask for the best help you can get yes. when you feel that you are going to lose what you found. And I have this really strong urge to leave here, although I know my true place. <laughs> and it has, of course, I'm confused, <laughs> like the one who writes the letter. And I've been also... You're the one who wrote this letter? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I've also been in these type of pursuits. And over the last three years, I dropped, 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 kind of totally deconstructed what was there or it, it happened like that. And now I find myself with really severe mind attacks, which I can look at, you know. I, it's not so much what bothers me, but it's like that I feel no passion. I feel no engagement. I feel really weird here with everybody being very devotional and... I'm very, very appreciative of everything here. Yes. But, you know, these voices come up, maybe it's wrong timing, or, you know, it's, I don't know, all kinds of blah, 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 blah. And I keep feeling this, you know, this urge to leave a couple of times in Zimar. You know, I was in the parking in my car. I didn't leave. And then you said that there was this lady 
you know, that came and <laughs> the next day she left without even talking to you. Yes. So I felt, you know, I have to just tell this and ask for your guidance. Yes. Thank you for coming also. Thank you for coming and not leaving like that. It's not good to leave like that. Something wants you to leave. Yes. There's something, you must know this something, this vice, that wants you to leave, wants you to leave early. Because there is this you who it wants to leave is the only chance it has to speak to anything in you, is to speak to that one. You will not speak to your highest truth, because in your highest truth he is not there. You see, it's speaking to the version of you, the idea you have of yourself, which at the moment is your current most favorite place, usual place, position. The runner. The, it's not just the runner. The runner, the seeker, the, 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 the one who is growing, the one who wants to finish all this nonsense and get back to. It's the self in role mm. as the seeker, still. And that's fine, because the seeker role can continue, continue, becoming more and more refined until one day it just pops out of the picture. Not that it pops, that it pops and there's something to pop into realization. It pops and uh, the real self is revealed behind it. I say sometimes the one who begins the inquiry will not end the inquiry, but will be ended by the inquiry. Very important statement. You see, it's not that one who begins the inquiry will not be the one left at the end going, "Yeah, I did it." <laughs> that one will fade out, and the one you have always been, the timeless one which you recognize today, is that one. You will be confirmed in that one as that itself. Everybody wants to run at some point. The story of Jesus in the wilderness, forty days and forty nights, was to be tested by the same one who is testing you. To tempt you. Why to tempt? You cannot be tempted unless you are temptable. Isn't it? There must be something to make you think. No, <laughs> isn't it? Because if you're not temptable, there's no temptation. Why can anybody come and tempt you with, you know, some? I've got some stale fish from last week. You know, I'd like to cheap. Uh, it's not temptation. You don't want it unless unless you are. <laughs> so something is coming, and it's finding the hole in your boat, so to speak, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And he just keeps on pushing the finger and opening it up more and more, and something going, "Oh no, I'm drowning, I'm drowning." And you, you, this one who, who feels attacked by the mind itself, hmm, is this one not perceivable? Yes, it is perceivable. Yes. What I find confusing is that I, I can be in my true place and nothing happening totally you, fine and then yeah there's two ways one is that you if you're able to stay in the true place to stay there first not as a hideout from the attacks no. of the mind simply because it's it's your true place and you love being in a true place. Yes. It, that, that work will continue alongside another work, which is if there is some kind of play happening from the dynamic identity, and you find that in many cases you can just turn your face away from it, turn away from that, and you can ignore it out of existence. But there may be some things that you try and turn your way from there, and it shows up here. You go, yeah. Okay, these ones yes. you must look at, and you must bring them in your inquiry. Who is being intimidated by this? 
to whom is it speaking? And really, not just, not just automatic, to whom is it speaking, to whom is it speaking, to whom, not this, but to whom is it speaking? And, and, and stop and see if you can identify to whom is this voice speaking? Is it to the self? Or is it to a self, which seems to be something here that, that feels itself as me, and it has some personal touch? You see? And if you identify, just by identifying what is the victim, what is the one that's, where is the oppressed one, as you identify that it's also a mind construct or so. But you actually see this, you actually see, and in the seeing of it, it just drops away. It will come back, but with, in, with, with less and less power. It will just fade out. These are more powerful seeds. You may have heard the term vasanas or mm. samskaras. There means that these are really forces that um, they have a kind of history. There are some latent tendencies, and these tendencies, when they flare up, can have the effect of holding the beingness hostage. What it means holding the being hostage means that when they come up, the beingness start to experience personhood and feeling trapped. So these we look at them in the light, in that unsparing light of inquiry, because it has the power, the laser power to burn those seeds. It is a work, but you know something, it is also a joyful work. Because in transcending them, so much confidence is coming back into the being, or rather fearlessness is arising in you. And the joy that these things are ephemeral, they have no lasting power. And this is why I say we must put some attention, listen to this video, listen to this talk again, and see, try and get the point I'm trying to convey to you. You see? Because when we speak about these things, it's almost like that's a taboo subject. You don't attack that subject. You don't criticize a subject. This is a human being that wants to help humanity. But when we look closer sometimes, we find that mm, maybe it's not quite the picture it appeared to be. Or you may find in yourself that something wants to run away and something is trying to justify why it is the right time to move. And then somehow something makes you stay. I say, maybe your higher choice made you stay. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that already. Um, and what is that, that total <coughs> lack of enthusiasm? Where does that come from? That I, is, I, I cannot yes. identify with that. That is, that is another attack. That is still another attack that the mind takes also. You know, he's fighting, uh, he's using up and burning so much energy, or just brr, apathy, total apathy. Nothing is happening. I can't even sneeze on my own. <laughs> what has happened to life? Maybe it's because you're searching for the truth and you're on the wrong path. That's where all your energy is gone. Can you bear an attack like that? You understand? Not every attack is coming in with grenades. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it comes like your friend. Hello, sweetheart. Long time no see. Come for a walk. It could be your friend. It could be your mother. It could be your father. It could be your sister. It could be your, your dog. And the dog will play a role, and he's totally innocent. <laughs> who, is, who is doing it? You can say, we can say that it is, you know, the devil is doing it, all kind of stuff. But I can tell you another one who can, you can say who's doing it. Consciousness. Consciousness is playing games with itself. The consciousness sometimes creates the sense of a problem in order to have the experience of transcending it. Depends on your outlook. It can also be if you're in the domain of of entities where you are, if you have an identity, it means you are an I entity. In the land of entities, they're not just human beings. They're dark forces also. You may call them demonic. They exist equally as real as you think you are. 
in their domain and whatever. You see, when you wake up from all of that, then it's, uh, it's all dream material you can look. But until then, it is only speculative for you to say, yeah, well, they don't exist or they do exist. When you are suffering from these type of things, that you feel there are many people. This is where, this is thousands of people have been touched by grace. Okay? And yet, then they have to grow because grace doesn't want to, like I said before, God gives you bread. Don't ask Him for toast. Okay? Make toast. Okay? What I mean by that, you know, life gives you some hints and you must respond. It's like a kirtan, it's a call and response. It gives you a little something, you must catch the clue, and you had a little something, you give it a little something more, a little something. And like that, you develop the spiritual muscles to discern between the real and the unreal. If you want God to peel your banana for you and put it in your mouth and chew for you, <laughs> then you're going to say, well, you know, it's because only then I know I'm not doing anything. It's not too fair, no? So the life gives the clues and you must find them. You must find the clue. And the more you are centered in yourself, the more you catch the clues easy. And it will be almost as though it's giving you directly after a while. You see? So there's this, all these subtle plays happen, and this is one of them. Something takes your field, your energy, and you're just there. And you're just thinking, oh my God, what is all this then? What is all this? What is all this? There was some two years ago, my story won't be accurate in the details, but accurate in the overall thing. Apparently, like a couple of uh, nuns or something were doing some experiment about following this, uh, these kind of, uh, kind of uh, Advaita uh, uh, self-inquiry. And they, report, uh, they wrote an article at the end to say you should not do it. Nobody should do it. It's very important to keep and hold on to your personality because they've done it. They went beyond personality and they experienced that it was just a void. There's neither light nor dark, there's no friendship, there's no, there's no love, there's no hate. There's nothing, nothing is there. It's just like a black hole. And they wrote a piece about it. Now, I want to say, they didn't do the inquiry. What happened is that they probably had some fear in the mind and the mind manifested itself as the findings that were coming out of the inquiry. Because they heard something maybe that, you know, there's nothing to be found, there's nothing there, and they, they somehow the mind took the form of their misunderstanding. And then what they experienced is, yet yeah, there was there's nothing there. Sounds very Advaita. There's nothing there. But that's not what is Advaita. There's nothing there, but from them, there's nothing there mentally. There's nothing there from a mental perspective, from personal. There's no person there. There's no person there. So there's no life. It was a very strange thing. And it took a little time to figure out what had happened to these people. Because the mind can. None of this would have happened. None of this was possible if the mind did not have the power to imitate the self. It had to create a version and to see if it can sell it to you. Yeah, maybe I tried this version, maybe it's better, maybe I can do better work than God anyway. Look at how things are going around here. <laughs> so there's a lot of different things, you see, and it finds its way, and it's all a part of the great play. It's all a part, because you'll make mistakes, you'll crash, and you'll, you don't want make that mistake again. You'll try something new, until you wise up enough to, to really just rest as the self, and just see how that unfolds in its own natural unfolding. So this is very, I feel this is a very important thing where uh, the mind also can take this form of just like, there's nothing to do, no jobs are showing up, I got no energy anyway, I feel totally tired, there's nothing to do, I'm not interested in anything, I just sit around all day, you know? But it's not it's causing you to sit around all day. Maybe nothing to do for a minute, nothing. But somehow you're powerfully present as the awareness. And it's a very different outcome <clears throat> than if there's nothing to do and you're just left as 
plain whole Mr. Person or Miss Person. A person with nothing to do is not good. The self with nothing to do is quite correct. And yet everything gets done. Many people, they come here and we're working together and sometimes the work is quite demanding in some way, you can say, very strong work. And what did they say? We travel all over the world with a team of people. So very, we travel to India. Every year we go back, we have to paint the ashram all over again because in one year it's got the biggest you know, spiders and all kind of, the paint is dirty. We go to, we clean the trees, we clean the floor, we clean everything, everything we do. And you ask the people who are volunteers there and they'll tell you, it's like we're doing nothing, it's just so easy, it's just so, it's just so easy, it's like something. Grace is doing it. You know how grace does something? When your heart is open and you, are, you, you say yes to it, grace is doing it. But if you start to say, yeah, well, you know, I don't know. You know, I've been here one week, I don't see Muji and he doesn't come. <laughs> And the work is so hard. Of course the work is going to be hard because your mind has become hard. You can move in life like this if you want. Eh? This body is told, this body, body has got diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, all the different things. I've got a long list of them. No? Okay? Usually going to the toilet, you know, I have to be peeing, you know, uh, two or three times, uh, every every hour or something like that. I don't mind to tell you. I don't. I don't mind about it. Okay. And I can sometimes sit six hours in satsang without going to the toilet. Why do it? God do it. I don't put in some. Listen, I'm going to be probably six hours tonight. Can you help me out? Oh, no, I am just here. I, just, I am just here. And it works like this. Same with you. Same with you, 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 all of you. Same thing. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't run away. There's something that wants you to run away from your highest opportunity because you can't share it with Him. You have to learn to stand on your own, not alone as a person, almost alone as everything. When you can do that, then you can be with everybody. You're fine, because you're not trading. You're free. But this power on earth, we must transcend its influence of this voice. It needs to be here for a while. We need it to grow. You need the voice of the mind to aspire and to come out to, to, to transcend its influence. We need to, you know, you need, even after awakening, we need somehow a little bit of trouble. Healthy. It's like vaccine. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. And. Um, Dear Muji Baba, thank you for being with me. I met you first by chance the last two days of the retreat in Rishikesh on YouTube. Sitting in front of the computer, I was overwhelmed by your love. Tears were running. I wanted to meet you and decided to participate in the silent retreat at Zimar. I had a great time there and I'm still in the retreat energy. Meeting the Sangha, in Bremen last Sunday, watching the live satsangs uh, from Monte Sahaja and watching any videos all over again. Especially one video I watched over and over again. It has the title, This Exercise is All the Help You Need, from the 6th of April, 2017. Your words describing the what is bring me deeper and deeper into myself. Thank you for this. 
spontaneity, love and humour become more and more part of my being. And I can see this in the reaction of the people. They are friendly and open to me. It's so wonderful and new to me. I thank you with all of my heart. You become part of me. I am willing to go for the truth. I put my life into your hands and trust in God. I love Bodhidharma. Adelbert Ronte. Adelbert Ronte. It's a good letter, no? Hmm? Just watching on the internet and listening inside the heart, something gets confirmed. You see? Hmm? Your words descri- describing the what is bring me deeper and deeper into myself. Spontaneity, love and humour become more, more a part of my being and I can see this in the reaction of the people. They are friendly and open to me. It's so wonderful and new to me. And I thank you with all of my heart. You become a part of me. Respected Muji, I've been watching you, your YouTube talks for three years now. Thank you so much for making this so freely available to everyone. I have not been able to practice the exercise of setting my thoughts aside and remaining as being. Whenever you direct us to do this, I find that my mind engages my attention almost fully. Again, who are you? If he was your friend, if he wanted something good for you, Hmm? He doesn't do this when you want to go out and, and um, muck about. He doesn't want you to encourage. But now you want to focus on your inmost being. You start the blah, 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 blah. Muji's talking. Yes, drop all your blah, 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 blah. You can't hear. It will do it. Why do you want to do it? Hmm? So when you ask the question like, is this going to die? Will it be there tomorrow? Is it any beginning? And others in the audience answer you, No, it will not die. Yes, it will be there tomorrow. No, it has no, it has no beginning. I begin to feel like I am the only one who is missing the seemingly obvious. <laughs> Which is what your mind wants you to feel as well. Look, they're all getting it. Look, 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 look. Yeah, they're all getting it. But you, dummy. <laughs> Maybe it's not my time. Maybe it's not my time. Maybe it's not my season for this. Maybe I'm not meant to be for this. Even as we sit in satsang, nothing to worry about, nothing else to worry about. Come with the invitation. Look. Just leave this, leave this for a minute. Anything easier than this? Just leave this alone. For, don't talk about it, don't talk. Leave this alone. Come, come, sit down. Blah, 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 blah. Shut up, mind. Shut up, shut up. I will not shut up. Shut up. <laughs> hmm. Wonderful. So, uh, I feel, uh, I begin to feel like I'm the only one who is missing the seemingly obvious. All that I experience during this exercise is continuing chatter of my mind, perhaps like a, perhaps a little slower. Why am I unable to practice this, Muji? That's my question. Hmm? Is there any alternative way? of self-inquiry for a seeker like me. (laughs) Is anything easier than this so far? Is anything easier than this? Right, you're sitting here, sitting in the room. Five minutes. Five minutes. A shift from the relative to the absolute. But is anything easier than this? There are people sitting in caves, naked, with tigers running around outside. 
There are people beating themselves with chains, standing on one leg for three years, eating one peanut and a half a glass of milk every day for this. But for you, No, Muji, it cannot fade. <laughs> Can it be sick? No, cannot be sick. How far from you is it? No, no distance. Is it you and it? No. I am it. Is there any alternative way of self-inquiry for a seeker like me, with respect? Niraja Rajavan, Bangalore in India. Easier than this? I will, I will ponder about it, if easier one. Just say, listen, just take a glass of orange juice, go to sleep, fine. You wake up, ping, Buddha. What is easier than that? Maybe it's too easy. Maybe it's too easy, and when it's too easy, you don't value. Again, celestial gem. What did he do to get a celestial gem? Nothing. So therefore, because he did nothing for it, he couldn't give value to it. He gave value to the little chippings. Because he knows what that worth. A lot of blood, sweat and tears for them. But What's that? <laughs> Big celestial jam. <coughs> Donkey. <laughs> so I think that God is having a laugh. <laughs> so all over the world, people are doing things, they're walking in hot sand. Hmm? holding their breath for three minutes and all kinds of stuff, beating themselves on the head with stones. I'm going to show up in Portugal, and I'm just going to give it to them. But they have to do something. Let's just say to them, leave your mind outside. Something they can't do, but they can. You know? And in three minutes, I'll reveal myself, and ping! And after that, they're still going to ask, yeah, but my mind says. <laughs> so to Naraja Bhagavan, or Raghavan, Rajavan, Naraja Rajavan, keep watching the video over and over until you get it. Isn't it? Or should I say it every time? Fresh again, fresh again, watch the same video. And watch your mind coming in. And you say, but hey, what are you doing? I left you outside, stay outside. Suppose the mind says, nope, I'm coming in with you. It's also okay if the mind wants to come in. Supposing, you know, there's 50 people coming to hug you, okay, and I say to you, you just don't hug anybody. Okay, so 50 people hug you and, uh, uh, any trouble? No. So let the mind come. So the mind come, I'm not staying outside, we go everywhere together, I'm coming with you. Okay, come, let the mind come, but don't hold his hand. Is it good? My beloved Sri Muji, when I returned from the Zima retreat, my dog, Trixie, did not recognize me for two days. <laughs> so it does happen, something really 
must have changed. <laughs> because a dog doesn't pretend, does it? <laughs> When I returned from the Zima retreat, my dog Trixie did not recognize me for two days. She kept her distance and looked at me suspiciously, <laughs> Sh sniffed for scent, and was nervous as if there was something missing. <laughs> and there was. <laughs> Can you imagine? This is amazing. Look. Two days later, I went for a walk in the woods nearby and was attacked by two angry dogs and had to run for my life. Okay? At, the, at the retreat, you did not mention anything about animals apart. <laughs> at the retreat, you did not mention anything about animals apart from two birds in a tree. It's all here, I'm telling you. I, uh, every word I'm reading, okay? Yeah. Birds cause me no difficulty. <laughs> Apart from one incident at the seaside many years ago, when droppings from a seagull flying overhead fell on my ice cream, <laughs> making it in an unedible. Please send extra grace and <laughs> support to cope with animals as I live in the country. <laughs> there is a bull in the next. <laughs> no, I don't believe this letter at all. It's kind of true. But there is a bull in the next field to my house, <laughs> but I won't go there. <laughs> I won't go there. Uh, apart from this, all is good. <laughs> apart from this, all is good with fantastic dreams. One last night, one last night was about a visiting alien <laughs> with a human type face. Dash strange. I am honored to have spent seven days in your company, soaking up your love and graces. With love and light, thank you, thank you, thank you. Padriak, Padriak, in brackets, Mulrayan, Ireland, uh, Irish, huh? Morek. Borek. No. P A D R A I C. Borek. Like porridge. <clears throat> Por you know him. No. <laughs> uh, 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 this is a good one. I must keep this one. Trixie didn't recognize me for two days. I wonder what she was seeing this one. Uh, dear beloved Master, thank you for all that you are and for your pointings and pristine presence. I have been following you for several years, and yet still I feel, excuse me, I feel caught in this prison of depression, excuse me, one of identity and deep sadness. It feels like a fear entrapment, a fear dash entrapment of being rejected and abused, and plays out strongly when I am with other people, especially with my husband. I know deep down that it is not true, and yet still the grip remains strong. It is ruining this life, or rather, I am allowing it to ruin this life, but I don't know what to do anymore. Being in the presence of satsang and inquiring daily 
for hours sometimes has been such a blessing and the beliefs in the person are loosening. Still, I am struggling. Or the one who is struggling feels so caught up in my beingness that it feels hard to go on with this life at times. Suicidal urges have been such a frequent part of this life. Please shower your grace on me. Each day I thank you, thank God, for all life has brought me, the good and the bad, for it has brought me to your feet, and for that I am eternally grateful. Please fully exchange me for the truth. I know that this life is for freedom. I love you. Thank you. Please forgive my ignorance. I am sorry. Jen from the USA. I have been following you for several years, and yet still I feel caught in this prison of depression, one of identity and deep sadness. Your way out is what? That you are observing these things. You can observe these things. Again, when we point to the fact that they are observable, you don't realize the power of that until you practice it. Don't. It just sounds like, yeah, okay, so I can observe it. So, no, observe it and you will see it is not the thing you imagine it is. It's something coming in like a dark cloud. When you see a dark cloud in the sky, do you feel depressed? No, you don't. What dark cloud means? It means dark cloud. That's all. When you can see things with that simplicity, like a child's mind and eyes, you will not be terrified of them. But we sometimes are living a life with too much meanings. You follow? Everything has too much meaning. The mind can take on this type of shape also. Everything, even letter, the shape. I don't like letters, the shape. Oh, take it away, take it away, take it away. Huh? Sorry, come and wipe your face. Handkerchief, oh, white handkerchief. I don't like white handkerchief. It's bad for your health. There are people like this, everything, they have too much meaning. And they're still looking up for more meaning of things. But in the true mind, the true mind is empty. It is empty. You think, well, how can an empty mind be of any value? Well, <clears throat> in the empty mind, there is no person. When something is needed, as is ordained in the universal being, you see, then whatever is needed spontaneously comes to address the need of the moment. And as soon as that need is satisfied or fulfilled, everything again collapses back into oblivion. You are not carrying around uh, some rucksack or hard drive of techniques. You don't need it. Only the mind has this type of fear and need this type of this type of uh, um, what you may call rehearsal to life. The one who is free doesn't need to rehearse anything at all. They are one with the cause. They are one with the causation. They are one with the stream of life. And yet they are not trying to be one. When you are free of ego, everything works well. When we carry ego, it keeps on just uh, spinning out more and more complexities. It is like that. <clears throat> and now, I know deep down this is not true, and yet still the grip remains strong. It is ruining this life. Or rather, I am allowing it to ruin this life. Look at that. But I don't know what to do anymore. Being in the presence of what to do, what to do. When you are, when you are, identify as a person, the person always has to be doing something. They're like a gearbox; always has to be in some kind of gear or something. But when you are, as the beingness itself, the beingness is satisfied, contemplating itself is so totally enriching, so totally complete, so totally beautiful. Does it mean that it shies away from activities? No, activities spins out of it. Just like 
because of the sun and the sunlights, the sun's warmth, all these trees are growing on the earth, all this life proliferate on the planet. Yet the sun cannot be said to be growing trees or warming. It just everything is just happens spontaneously because it is there also. Similarly, when your mind is rooted in the heart, all of life seems to be flowing. Everything is moving around. But you are like the polar star. Relative to you, everything is moving, but yourself is stillness. You discover this. It's not uh, something I am wishing that you manifest. You're not manifesting anything, you see. <clears throat> Being in the presence of satsang and inquiring daily for hours sometimes has been such a blessing, and the beliefs in the person they are loosening. Still, I am struggling. You can say, still, the sense of struggling continues to play. Because the minute you say, still, I am struggling, you have identified so strongly, you see. If you, if you say there is a sense of struggling going on, there is already some distance from this. And then I can say to you, stay as the witnessing of that. But when you say, I am struggling, is almost you leave no space to see, which is not true. There is always space to see. <clears throat> the one who is struggling feels so caught up in my beingness that it feels hard to let go with this life. It feels hard to go on with this life at times. Suicidal urges have been such a frequent part of this life. I guess this, you see? This, I have to say, is some demonic play. I want to finish, finish the life, finish. Why do you want you to finish life? Normally, you see, normally, uh, what you may call, what they call these things, the, the one that lives off other things. The parasite normally doesn't want to kill the host, because that's his living, isn't it? But this demon parasite doesn't mind killing the host, because he will catch another ride later with you. So suicidal urges have been such a frequent part of this life. Please shower your grace on me. It is with you now. Each day I thank you. Thank God for all life has brought me, the good and the bad, for it has brought me to your feet, and for that I am eternally grateful. Please fully exchange me for the truth. I know this life is for freedom. This exchanging me for the truth has taken place today, but you still have got to wake up enough to collect your winnings. Collect your winnings. Can you imagine doing your lottery? And you got the receipt, all the numbers and the receipt you have paid, and all the numbers have come up. You win five million euros. You left a ticket in your pocket, and somebody's put it in the laundry. <laughs> what to do? You've not taken care of it. You've not taken care of it. What I mean by this, now it has been revealed to you. Some effort is required, because something wants to keep pulling you back to the old way. I gave the example that if you, when we are changing currency, and sometimes a country experiences a change in currency, and you may have to go from you know, pound, shillings and pence to pounds and new pence, and something, something feels different. We don't know how to evaluate the difference. What's the value of the new money? So everything comes, you convert it back into old money thinking. You see, until somehow, gradually, you transition into the new, the new concept, the new way. Because at one day, the old money is going to become redundant. It becomes redundant, and all your treasures are there. The government gives you a date by the 10th of March. You must bring everything to the bank. The 10th of March, you're on holiday somewhere. 
all your things have gone. You must be learning the new currency. In a short time, you'll get used to it. You will not have to relate to the old currency for the value. You'll be able to relate from the new currency. You follow my point? So this changing over has happened now, and you have some you have a certain amount of time, I'm putting it like that. For each one it may be different. To embed your consciousness in that. To stay there, to understand what has happened. I've seen this. With my own mouth I've said this. Is it true or not true? If it is true, then I, it, it must begin to somehow bless every other aspect of myself must be touched by this. So profound it is. Why am I still talking from the past position? You see? If you're in England, you can't go now with the old pound and the, and the old you know, sixpence to buy anything. He said, yes, but I used to be able to buy some chips. Yeah, but that was 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, but it's still real. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, next customer, please. You've missed it. You have missed it. Don't miss it. Isn't it? Hmm? Don't take offence at my words. I have to stress them, because it's very easy. Sometimes we're very lazy. And this is not putting a hardship on you. Hmm? <clears throat> you see? Okay, now... Hmm. Suicidal urges have been such a frequent part of my life. Please shower your grace on me. Every day I thank you and thank God for all life has brought me, the good and the bad, but has brought me to your feet so that I am eternally grateful. Please fully exchange me for the truth. It's easy. Look how easy it is today. Some of you coming for the first time to satsang. Today you have seen. Anybody come for the first time today and saw got my point? Did you get the pointing? Is it still uh, feel like it's some fantasy? Does it feel like a fantasy to you? What you what has happened? What have you felt? Huh? No, it would be very incredible if someone like you could speak something. Be honest. What happened today for you? Well, to be honest, it wasn't easy. Yes. And I, I wasn't agree. I wasn't nodding my head with everyone or doing the exercise. You didn't do the, the exercise. I, I did, but I, uh, ha I said maybe <laughs> for as this, uh, um, your question was, uh, is this new or something like that? And I thought, you know, it could be created by God. Right? The idea of God and crea uh, created being and creator is where I kind of, uh, hesitated, but then God is eternal. So I'm I'm working on it, and then I realize it's mind, and so the humor definitely helps. <laughs> so uh, sometimes it's uh, so easy alignment, and then other times it's. But I, but I'm conscious. I'm noticing it, and the yeah. noticing in the inquiry, it's mm. good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good, it's good. Anyone else who was new, who, who really felt it was of value to them, they could see? And anybody follow that at all? This, this lady here, could you share with us a little? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, it's the first uh, I met you. Yes. And. Um, my heart, my heart is, my English is not so well, sorry. And my heart um, had a pain a long time. 
But now I feel that um, something is more um, stable in it. Yes. And that the mind does not go so much around, but I can um, let it go um, easier here. Very good, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Anyone who is new again, who was who felt that they could follow through with the invitation to look. Is there anybody there? You are there. Please share. I know it's not easy, you are sitting with a lot of people, but it really is of value if you can share. I just want to see how it is for someone who is new to this. You see? <coughs> Apparently. Nobody is new to this. Hello. Hello. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you very much. Thank you, yes. This is my first time ah. here and with you. Yes. <laughs> and I feel, I don't know, everything is all right. Everything is perfect. Yes, yes. <laughs> Life is perfect. Everything is, <laughs> is right, the way it is. <laughs> so thank you. Very great, very great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And wonderful, um, wonderful. I will keep you with me forever and all of you and all... <laughs> I don't know. It's it's so big, so good. Yes, yeah. yeah. So 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 nice. Ah, up, yes. nice. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much from all my heart. From everything. Everything is, is perfect. Thank very, you. Very good. Look at that. <laughs> very good. Very good. Yeah, someone at the also at the back there when the Someone also there? <clears throat> Would you can I maybe uh, say for this person uh, who is suffering eventually depressions, there yeah. is a video as well possible to see uh, from Lisbon. It's called Go and Enjoy Your Life. Ah, that yes, was this yes, yeah. uh, gentleman who suffered depression and he was, uh, he was uh, saying that he took his depression into the room. Yes. And uh, so that is when it became clear that he was not the depression. The yeah. depression was still there, but he didn't care for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and he, he said, oh, I wish I would sit at home in my chair. And you invited him to come and sit in your chair. And uh, you guided him, and he really... You know, forgot yes. about his this depression and uh, just was yes, yes, yes. Dissolved. This video, I, it, yeah, it was called "Go, go and go enjoy, and your, enjoy life. your life." Yes, but it came only after someone who was speak. Thank you for reminding yeah. me of this too. Somebody who was speaking from, you know, say that you know this depression is with me for some time, and you know it's very difficult to let go of it or whatever, and mm -hmm. somehow. Uh, we, uh, we, we came into a place of talking through it, and uh, then he just something changed, and he just uh, he was very, he was very very happy. He was laughing, and everything was good. So that could be a very good video for who this one was it this one or before yeah. Um, so it has been recommended for you to look at the videos from Lisbon, the Lisbon intensive that took place about a month ago. And uh, to, to look for that video, go and enjoy your life. You may find something there that you can relate to. You want to see? It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. On what? On Muji TV. On Muji TV. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, yes, I remember. And because many people speak about this, they felt that it was a very beautiful um, release from something that was just uh, stuck. So, uh, yes, it has been recommended for you to look at that one. Um, so, uh, very good. So, this is Jen from the USA. Mm -hmm. How is everybody feeling? Enough for now? We, we, we are good? One or two letters? You want to speak something? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, come. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. Um, the burning that I that I told you yesterday that brought me here. Yes. With a backpack, with a backpack only. 
it's still here and uh, if it's coming from a person then I, I, I'm gonna look like a big fool but that's okay but if it's something that's like suffocating my being which I do believe it is since, since when I do the inquiry it stays, it's subtle it's, it is sub, subtle um, yesterday when I came to Sahaja like a maniac uh, I know it's it it kind of it's obsession, but it's kind of a possession at at the same time. Uh, coming from Croatia, I didn't like. I, I felt like I was following the fire that was burning, and there was not there was like none nothing that um, could make me stay. I was just like, okay, what's meant to happen is gonna happen. If I'm gonna turn back home and just like, okay. Uh, that's gonna happen, but all the time I was just being pushed forward. So from uh, from the airport to Brussels to Lisbon, and um, nice, uh, so very nice people from uh, the um, uh, Sahaja Jababan took me in, and I came yesterday. But now, still, when I look in, when I check this thing. Still stays. It's yeah. it's it's not only physical. It's kind of I don't know. I want. I, I just wanted to check mm -hmm. because it it's something that's there brought me here, and I I just have to trust that. I don't think that's like if mine did it. It it has to have a purpose. I don't know what's. I don't I don't actually. But does know it matter? What's happened. Does it matter at all? What brought you here? Well, okay. Th yeah, that's that's a good point. That's yes. another point. That no? doesn't matter. Yeah. No, because now I'm here. Okay, now I'm here. Yes. And I can check now. I can check in now. <coughs> and as I check in, um, I don't know. I just, it's 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 a lot of frustration that that's seen. There's a lot of confusion that is seen, arrogance too, but just space. And as I as you 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 made a joke and all of you were laughing and I just stayed in, didn't go with the laugh. Um, what about if you didn't go with the confusion? No. No, no. What about if you didn't go with the confusion? And I, I, I don't go. Okay. I just stay like I just let let every like now when it, everything's shaking, I'll mm -hmm. just I just let it go. And yeah. the voice that is coming out, just okay, that's that's happening. Just let it go. Mm -hmm. But this thing, I don't know how to say that. But every time I was doing the inquiry, it came up. It came back to that. And every thought that was. In a day, as I was moving, that was perceived is like got sucked up on it. Mm. It's so, it's so, it's so weird because I, of course, I don't know what's happening with me. Like I told you yesterday, I was, I was in a, I was in a mess. But um, when I, when I was at work on Thursday morning, as I was, as I was feeling like just letting go. I don't know to what, but I was I was letting go everything that I was doing, like practical things, was just getting done perfectly. I I couldn't find something. I was just I just let go, and I was drawn to the thing I was looking. So it was amazing. It was so amazing, so spontaneous and amazing. And it got me to a bench outside of the place I worked, and I I was just okay, lying down, perceiving everything was happening. Like I was sitting, okay, sitting, birds, trees air stuff and um, perceiving that, that sense of presence, like just staying with I am, it got me into heavy breathings and like <laughs> something like Sudarshan Kriya, which I, which I did a long time ago. And it, it's, it, was so, it was so that I was just letting that happen, but at the same time there was pain and growing, but like what's happening to me? It, that, that was not me. It was body mind like doing <laughs> Not, not me. Yeah. And uh, this now it stayed that like the pressure. That's a lot of pressure. Not that. So 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 like. Still. Just leave it like leave it leave yes, it. Yes, like I mean I, w w what, I mean it's uh, what it's it, by itself. It doesn't prove anything. It proves that there's a uh, the pressure being felt here, and that the mind is struggling is finding every opportunity to give a strong label to it, a strong identity to it, a strong uh, interpretation of it, to say, you know, maybe to bring fear inside or something, but if, many, many times these type of things happen 
where sometimes people feel a lot of heat in the knee, like it's really burning for no reason, or that there's a big block in the throat. Or yeah, something. that's, that's this, this, yes. hard throat. So these things are, are usually quite a common manifestation. When you're in this a certain kind of state, they manifest, but it's nothing. They're soon gone, there's nothing. He's got to try it to see if it frightens you enough to abandon your search or something like that. No, no, no. Yeah, no. But it, like, it got me from watching the video recording of Zimar on Thursday, got me here. Yeah, like just it. There was no like um, doubt in my in my in in my being. Just I was just letting go. And <laughs> even as I was on the bus station and and the and the airport, there was not like it was there was space. There was space. Even though I w- I, d- I didn't know what's happening, I was just going with the flow, and everything was just clicking, 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 and I came. <coughs> but now, being on satsang, there was a lot a lot of things come out. Yes, come, came your up, life has got to become like a writing on water. Okay? If you write on something on water, you cannot read it three seconds later. Sorry, what was this letter? You can't, it's finished. You see? What it mean? Because if you're a person, then very, very much your life is supported by a lot of thoughts and a lot of collection that you hold in memory. But <coughs> as, <coughs> as it deepens away from the person and more into the state of presence, that is moving more in towards pure consciousness. Pure consciousness does not need a history. It is not an object, it's not a person. A person needs history. They thrive on history and lineage, traditions and all of this. The consciousness is not so, um, you know, uh, invested in any of these things, because it is not an object, it is not a person, you see, it's that pure spirit. So this is why the consciousness is not cluttered. The mind of the person tends to be very cluttered, they suffer from claustrophobia, too much thoughts, too much meaning, too much feelings, too much memory, you see. And so it feels very stuffy, Often you are speaking with people and they are speaking from the past. You are in the present, they are speaking from the past. And do you think you are having a conversation with somebody in the present, but they are talking about sometimes six months ago. They are not caught up with, it, with today yet. You see, this is the nature of the person. Consciousness is very different from this. It is not carrying, it is not working out that it wants something from you or something like that. It is just so fresh. So therefore, it is effortless, and effortlessly beautiful because of that. You see, it has space. The whole universe is fitting inside it. So this is the difference. And as you, your attention becomes more to love and to focus on the heart or, or the self, you find that somehow you don't come across. You know, when you're as a person with a lot of issues, a lot of issues, lots of things are, can go wrong with you. Then when people meet you, they are not attracted to you, because you have no space. Your life is too full of you. There is no space for them. It is like buying a car with just one seat. (laughs) There is no room for nobody, not even your mother can fit in. You see? So this is not the way of the the Self. The Self is totally open. It has no luggage, it has no past, it's very fresh. Now you may feel, oh no, no, but I need my past. I need, I, I need my story. But guess what? Nobody else does. <laughs> Nobody else needs your story. And they'll be very happy if you dropped it. <laughs> it would make their life a lot easier. So if you're walking down the road and you notice somebody who knows you, cross the road the other way, it may give you a clue. They don't want to talk with you. And maybe because you have too much to say about something they don't want to know. (laughs) We can be very much out of touch with life because you are so much in your own world, in your own bubble, you are just looking for some ears to speak something into. It doesn't matter whose. So, um, yes, I'll come back to you on this. What, what guides you?
guidance can you give when engaging with people that are very much living from the past and identifying with the past and not present? Mm -hmm. I ask that question because my mother's very much like that, very much invested in the identity in the past. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I find I, I'm not, that's not where I am. And sometimes I find it challenging to know how to engage apart from just keeping quiet and, and being um, I don't know if there's anything that you can say that you can say oh no <laughs> mom I gotta go <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do what can you do this, this is another primary example again that uh, you know you, how you can speak with someone like that they, they don't even hear you you know if you moved out the picture and somebody replaced it, you probably don't even notice because there's so much in their story. And I was saying, oh, where's Junior? Oh, he's gone. He went half an hour. Oh, anyway, as I was saying, they don't probably even see you sometimes. This is the nature. What can you do? You can say, listen, you know what? Okay, I better not say that one. <laughs> you can just say, you know, listen, I. Do you really need somebody to say this to mom? Because really, you know, I mean, I can't relate to what you're speaking about or something, you know, right now. But it's not easy. It's not easy. Because you have a relationship together. It's homegrown. It's very difficult to get out of that. Maybe you have to watch how somebody else is with her. You know? Some people can be beautifully straight and say things that you would never dare to say and might get a result that you're very happy to see. If somebody may just say to her, listen, love, you don't make sense. <laughs> and she must go, what? <laughs> Run off, and then somehow that may change something. We don't know. But you as a daughter maybe can do nothing at all. Except if really something inside you change and uh, gives you the power to function in a different way with her. It's very difficult when we have relatives because they expect a certain, uh, a, there's a certain role that you play with each other, and you only have to, you have to change completely internally, and then you can function. But you cannot use it as a technique; it doesn't work. You see, um, it might be good. You know, they do some some boot camps, <laughs> which is just some really good, you know, sort of challenges like. Climbing up a hill with a with a pulley and rope and stuff, and that works wonders actually, you know, or falling into a pool of really cold water and stuff, and have to swim for it a little bit and stuff. And that can work wonders, things like that. But kind of like trying to say, "Mom, you need to make a bit more sense," and and uh, this doesn't work. You know, this doesn't work. Uh, there was a couple sitting uh, with each other. The husband was sitting down, came home from work, sat down, and was. Uh, uh, he said something. Um, oh, yes, uh, so, well, what were you saying, dear, about, uh, about the dinner? And she says, never mind, that was yesterday, <laughs> basically. That kind of communication I'm talking about. Sometimes people that don't communicate, they don't relate anymore. So what can change that? Do something very different. Might help, you know? I'm, I'm really amazed. Even people coming for laughing yoga, you know what difference it can make? Just laughing yoga. Like they have, I haven't laughed for 10 years. <laughs> you might meet people like this. The first time we did it uh, in India, uh, some people were there, like, they've never laughed. I was like, oh, oh. Uh, they couldn't do it, and just after the third time, something opened up, and they just dropped ten years off. So things like this can make a big difference, rather than trying to go through the route of trying to speak to the mind, because a lot of times it's, it's already gone, basically. It has to be revived in a different, refreshed. The refresh button is not through speaking, but through something very different. You know? Does she speak with your father or something? No. 
Mm. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Someone there. Uh, one, one second. Can I hear from you? Yeah. Come to the, come to the microphone and. Okay. Hi. Um, I took the invitation. Yes, yes. And I experience <coughs> awareness. Um, and there is a thought <laughs> that when I will be back in Amsterdam, this is where I live, and now I'm talking. Um, I'm talking out of experiences, so I don't know. This is like what, ha what used to happen. Yes. So what used to happen is that I do, I do my meditation, I do my whatever strategy to, to stay in the I am, mm -hmm. and it works. And yet, there are so many moments where I totally identify with whatever is happening now. Yes. And I get so tired of it. So yes. So what I'm asking, I don't know if, if you can give me a hint or whatever. I mean, I was even thinking about <laughs> asking a person to create an app on my phone that will ever, <laughs> every five minutes give a bleep bleep and oh yeah, <laughs> a reminder, you know, like. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing, <laughs> but I'm going to show you a better thing. App is going to be good, but app would mean that someone is being reminded to be something. And I want to ask you a question, which you and anybody else who can embrace my question. All your life, everything you experience changes. It's true or not? Yes. Yeah. Even something you love, you love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Then you get it. And then after a while, it changes. Your feelings change, or it change, or something. Or often our feelings change. Mm -hmm. Or the thing you get is not quite what you think you are getting from it, or something. Everything is changed. Your thoughts change. Ideologies change. The idea you have about yourself change. The ideas we have about God change. About life change. Everything is changing. The world is changing. The trees are changing. The roads are Everything is changing. Okay? Have you ever experienced anything that is not changing. Until today. Because I asked you, can this change? And your answer was, is? Yes. No. Okay. It cannot change. How you know why you didn't think about it? Listen to me. Why you didn't think about it? People didn't say, hang on a second, let me see. He said, no, it doesn't change. Uh, can it be sick? No, it cannot be sick. Because we know what can be sick, and this cannot be sick. I did, I, did I ask you, can it die? Can it die? No. Uh, sure? How you can be sure about something you can't describe? Isn't it amazing? Huh? How you can speak so clearly about something you can't touch, you can't feel, has no shape, has no size, has no date of birth? How you speak with such... Have you ever spoken about yourself with such, with such certitude and such authority? You say, yeah, I'm this type of, well, I'm not really, maybe, yes. Yeah, so you, you are describing your mind, that's why. Previously, what you described of yourself came from your mind. And this is why you stutter, you know, well, uh, well, sometimes, and, you know, yeah, sometimes I like this, sometimes I, you're discussing something to do with your mind. And here, you were not talking about your mind. So, this is what I'm pointing to say. This, which you have yourself confirmed, does not change. So now I want to see, okay, it does not change. You say you are it. 
I ask you, do you change? You must have an aspect of yourself which changes. Is that aspect of yourself which is changeable and whose change is itself observed by you also? How many yous are there in this house? How many tenants are in this house? Or is it that there is a kind of line of continuum which at one hand you may say is the absolute and then as, you, as it stretches out it becomes the sense of presence and if it stretches further it becomes the sense of person and if it stretches even further it becomes the person's world or something. But it's one continuum rather than different things. And that as, as the focus comes back it sees that what is there is movable and it comes about more and this is less movable comes about more but where it is is unmovable maybe for the first time you can report from your inmost place without speculating the scientist has studied materiality and uh, no he can make a lot of talk has he studied himself Can he speak? Huh? It's I. It's I. Who is I? Yes. So for the first time, I'm hearing it myself. You may have heard it somewhere else. I hear myself. That in a group as big as this, again, so many people standing up to confirm it is so. No? And yet, you say also, in the past, working from the position of the I am, even still, this, this person still, sense still comes up. And now I ask you, well, this is a very, very, is a very profound uh, discovery of that which is unchanging. Is it still the same potency of unchangingness? Mm -hmm. Yes. You're going to go back to Holland, you're going to see, okay, you know, the mind comes up. Remember my example about the changing over of currency. Mm -hmm. That for a while, because of habit and the momentum and the, of, have, of habit, there'll be a tendency to keep going back to familiar ground. Okay? And this is feel like it's too new. It's still, it's still so fresh. We won't use it just yet because I still can trade in the whole currency. But the new thing, you are not touching. Hmm? And you are who? The same one who say, I am it. Which means that I am not going to come from my deepest place. I am not going to be awake to my deepest truth. Although all my life or lifetimes, it has never been so clearly recognized as now. But still, I'm still going to go to the old In spite of finding that I'm not going to go, maybe I'll just, somehow something just keeps going back to the old place because what I'm used to. So it is still, all of this is, you know, uncharted territory in satsangs. It's a very new um, development in my satsangs. And I'm wanting to see where they're going to go. If all you, you're going to go back to sleep. I say no, because that which brought it forward did not do it in vain. That which revealed itself, because this did not come from the human kingdom. This did not and is not coming from a human, it's not sourced in the human, human kind of experience. It came directly from the self and it never fails in its intention, for at least one, at least, at least one is going to flower completely into the pure nature. At least. I would like to put it like, you know, 60, 70 at least. Yeah, why not go for it? I mean, I'm being very moderate. <laughs> 70 per week? 
per day. <laughs> if I was going to count 70, would you be out? No. Well, okay. Let's see. There's more than so many hundred here, you know? So if I say 70, are you in or out? We will see. <laughs> Somebody will. <laughs> we will see how it is. Isn't it? Thank you, won't you? Yes, thank you, thank you for coming up. I just want to express my gratitude. Thank you. I am alive. Yes. Thank you. life itself and the witness to life. Staying here at Montesaja has been very, very rich experience. Yeah. These layers of this eye feeling you just mask. Yes. My real face underneath has been bleeding for a long time. No face. Your sword is very, very sharp. Ego has been bleeding. Yes. What a beautiful game. Mm -hmm. No place to hide in Montesaja. Checkmate. Beautiful to be cornered. Yes. What a blessing. Yes. Truly, what you said is very, very true. The dust, the dust of disciples is our crew. How this perfect world here in Monte Sahaja, not only Monte Sahaja, but all the beings, you bring all these beautiful beings from all over the world to show that light can shine, it is possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thanking. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Very good. May I come? Yes, come.
as you like, Mother. Saving this life. It is as though the pure consciousness is saving the life of the conditioned consciousness by absorbing it into itself, its own source. How is it possible in the form of a human body? How is it possible in the form of a human body that we can discover formless, which is you. Yes. Of all the bodies that are available on this planet, the human body is the most appropriate. The human body, the consciousness, has the diversity of expression, the power, the ability to reflect upon itself much better than in other forms of consciousness. Yeah. It is called blessedness to inherit a human body, because consciousness is manifesting in many different forms. The human body it is capable of reflecting upon itself, to meditate upon the Supreme, to merge in the Source. So it is good. What a gift! Yes, what a display of its power. So much. Yes. Because even the form is consciousness. Even the form itself is consciousness. And just like we see, all these things we see here existed first as thought, and then through desire they became concrete forms of thought. And as I said before, even the, the natural things, the organic things, they were and are the concrete forms of God's thought, including these bodies. Hmm? the instrument through which he could manifest his power and beauty. But consciousness is such a diverse... If it had to manifest, it must manifest through some system of duality, because in order to experience, duality is necessary. And if it is going to manifest in the plane of relativity, it must do it to the extreme. It cannot leave out anything. It must be able to be extremely good and extremely bad, the capacity. So it must taste the possibilities of, uh, of each interrelated opposite, and each one according to their uh, unique, you may call destiny or karma will reap the fruits of their activities in accordance with the will of the Supreme Being. We don't have to think about that. It is enough that you are called by the grace. It means that somehow there is a capacity now um, displaying in the farm. The potential is always there, because the seed is the one self. There is only God. Manifesting as all this diversity. This is at the highest uh, understanding. Because even God, who decides to wear a face just in order to be perceived in some conceptual level by the different uh, races and religions according to their tendencies, he has also a faceless face. He can be with face or without face. I feel that all my life is offered up. Yes. Every breath is already offered before I say it. Yes. We cannot deny that. Only one who has gone beyond choice 
me say that. We forget that the capacity of consciousness, the human mind cannot comprehend. How vast! Nobody can know the mind of God, and no one can come uh, to to the end of the mind in that way, or to know all things in that way, and certainly not through study, and not through the cerebral knowledge. You cannot do it. You can have a taste of a, if it is revealed inside the heart to give you a taste of the energy of knowledge of knowingness that that uh, of the that divine kind of knowing but i don't feel anything is as great as uh, the knowing which is uh, the names and forms and shapes and this kind of knowing is not so important the knowing of the self which is not informational knowing we are knowing and being are one that is a true knowing i don't know if it is uh, the word should be knowledge could should be called knowledge because it is easily misunderstood that knowledge is something that you collect and that you 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 hold on to and have the sense of knowing but when we speak of self knowledge it is this it's not a knowledge of information it is the knowing where knowing and beingness are one where you are the answer but not you personally sometimes human beings think of themselves only in personal terms we have not yet grasped that we are essentially consciousness we relate to ourselves as only body mind entities with deep conditioning but have not or we are afraid it seems to discover ourselves as consciousness and consciousness is the most pure and this is why this invitation has brought you to a seeing that you did not expect you didn't think it out you didn't work it out you did not create it because it is uncreated you discover that which is uncreated now is it blasphemous that that capacity is within you to discover that which is beyond the world of names and forms who gave you the freedom to reach so far you see no one can surprise god if it is revealed in your heart uh, no one can act contrary to the will of the supreme it is because somehow it chooses to reveal itself inside you that you may have such such a not by human uh, ability is one able to grasp such things it's only by the supreme uh, intelligence Yes. He says, because it is the very source of perception. It is that within which the functioning of perception is perceived. And yet, it does not lose any power to that. Nor is it personally concerned about it. From that higher place, there is nothing for it to be concerned about, because everything is it, automatically takes care of it. But on the level, from the perspective of duality, and the sense of individuality then things are perceived in a different way the function of consciousness and the intellect the vital force and the body is very different in the different zones and regions of consciousness and yet it can also be felt as nothing no quality beyond quality beyond quality 
it is very difficult for human beings to appreciate something as beyond quality. Because we venerate quality, we, we venerate knowledge, and we have the love for things because we consider ourselves as something. That higher knowledge which transmute, it doesn't transmute actually, it's just that it, it, it finds the, uh, the, the kind of material identity as being gross, more coarse, without cynicism, I say that. Hmm? And the subtler, the subtler ways of consciousness does not need arms and legs even to experience life. I love you so much. I love, I love you too. You so much. I cannot lie. Yes. All glory to the Supreme One. Maybe it is the final thing for us to so much be in a state of surrender or introspection that the sense of separateness is eaten up or dissolves. Where there is no pride, there is no arrogance, there is no separation. There is no vanity, but it is not easily found, because the power of the senses in this plane of consciousness is indeed strong. But we are not to worry about that. If your attention is fully immersed in the being, everything will turn out just right. We don't have to solve things one by one. Just like a fisherman goes out, and, or a boy goes to the, the river and catch a fish with a string, but a fisherman casts his net and catches thousands. The one who has immersed his mind inside, uh, in such a one, the universal consciousness is in full bloom. I I can have uh, a French translator, please. Français. Uh, Nanda. Okay. Yes, so how are uh, you? Right behind. Oh, right yes. Behind. Okay. <laughs> Namaste, uh, Sri Muji. Uh, namaste. J'ai découvert ici à Monte Sahaja. I discovered here in Monte Sahaja. Que je rêvais ma vie. But I but I dreamt my life. Que la personne Jean Emmanuel n'était qu'un rêve. Je n'étais qu'un rêve. But I was only a dream. Quand ça a été vu, 
when this, but what, when this was seen. J'ai vu que tout n'était qu'un rêve I également. Everything was a dream also. Que Muji Montesaja, tout ceci n'était qu'un rêve. But Muji Montesaja, everything was a dream. Pour permettre à la conscience de se connaître elle-même. To allow consciousness to know itself. To allow consciousness to know itself. To know itself. Ce fut une, une grande découverte. That was a great discovery. Effroyable. Sometimes very frightened, frightening. De ne pas exister, de ne de semb qui semblait que je n'existais pas, que le, le personnage en tout cas n'existait pas. Just to recognize that the person didn't exist. Et puis, à part ça, je me suis vu en toute chose. J'ai vu la conscience en toute chose. And a part of this, I saw consciousness in everything. J'ai vu que la conscience adoptait de nombreux visages. I saw that consciousness was playing through different faces. Et jouait à, à se connaître, à se rencontrer. And to play to uh, see itself and meet itself. J'ai beaucoup d'amour. I have a lot of love. Pour tout ce qui est ici, pour ce que nous sommes. For everything that is here, for what we are. Pour cette possibilité que vous nous donnez de nous connaître, de connaître notre vrai visage. For this possibility to recognize ourselves, our true face. De voir que Muji est arrivé <laughs> pourrait sembler choquant, mais j'ai vu que c'était le soi qui toujours s'amusait, qui voulait se rencontrer, qui voulait se connaître. To see that life wanted to meet itself. Le personnage, bien sûr, la personnalité, mais ce n'était que conscience. And that it was seeming a person, but in truth it was just consciousness. Je repars demain. I go tomorrow. Mais je crois, je sais que je n'ai jamais quitté cette place. But I know I never left this, this place. Elle a toujours été là. It was always here. <laughs> c'est vous qui dites, je crois, c'est un jeu divin. <laughs> it's, you say it's a divine uh, game. C'est vraiment cela. <laughs> it's really this. <laughs> Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Merci à tous ces avatars. Thanks to all these avatars. Tous ceux qui ont pris cette forme, qui sont venus nous donner le message. And to all those who came into this earth and gave this message. Nous apporter la lumière. To bring us light. Pour nous permettre de retourner chez nous et de nous connaître réellement tels que nous sommes. To allow us to go back home and to know ourselves truly. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for these words, which flow from your heart. Is uh, so touches my heart also. Merci à ces mots qui viennent de ton cœur et qui me touchent. When consciousness. Reveals itself in such simple way. Shall I, shall I keep on translating? Or? I think he can hear now from translation. 
when the consciousness is uh, somehow displaying itself in such a simple way, then it is um, it's so much joy because I want to tell you something that everything that has manifested upon the earth and has been put in the hands of men have been distorted. While we have in our heart the belief that we are persons, we have desire and everything, everything we touch, we change. We cannot give up this habit. The very fact that we manifest our thoughts, our desires are affecting the very thing we desire, the very thing we think about is affected by our our contact, even if it is not physical, it is changing it. It is perhaps here that the basis is made, that, that everything in this world is a dream. In itself, the raw material manifestation is just what it is. But this is not the way we experience it. We experience it through our conditioning and culture and desire and identity. All of this act upon what we see. And then we take it as though what we see is a fact and should be a fact for everybody. But everything you see and you apply your own projections onto, we make it into a fiction and not a fact. It is here where I say, there can never be a universal oneness that, that we approach through the mind. This is the significance of recognizing when I say, you must be like the cow that jumped over the moon. And this invitation is in effect like this. Because look how, if we ask you on the basis of your person, your view of this world and what the world needs to become a better place, there will be as many different opinions as there are people. Sometimes the same person will put several opinions. But when you are asked to follow this invitation and to look from the no mind place, how we are in agreement and nobody argues. Why? Because you are discovering from your heart and not from your mind. There can never be one world from the mind. Because uh, the people the people who start off being the winners of it, they themselves will, 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 will change. Because that is the nature of the manifest. While we have the sense or the feeling of being persons, we are under a spell that we cannot, we cannot control our projections. We are like, uh, we are like, like dwarves behind huge dogs been pulled about, our minds will drag us about. Only when we come again from the place of the heart, where all our testimonies are one. It is here that we are one. It is here that we must discover to discover the true oneness. Judge for yourself. Search within your own self. Contemplate a little and see if you will come up with a different answer. But not all powers in the world, not all peoples in the world, aspire for such a unity. You may find innocent as it appears to be, there would be great uh, mm, resistance to destroy an understanding that is so innocent. Such is the nature of a world that is driven by egoic or egotism. 
then we have a chance to see uh, what we are protecting is the very thing we should drop. But you cannot drop it until you find that which is true. Because only then will it surface in you the confidence to see the real as the real and the false as the false. We don't give things up necessarily because they are true or untrue. We hold on to things because we are attached to them. We like to think we make rational decisions as whether something is right or wrong or true or false. But when it comes down to it, it's just how much involved in it you are, very often. When a human being has in their heart an aspiration for the true, then something rushes powerfully to meet them and to take them home. Because so valuable is a being who is awake to the true, whose light lights the path of thousands, and who is not selfish. Is it not you? Is it not you? Who told you it's not you? When the voice calls for truth, and for the one who longs for truth, is it not you? Il me semble que tout n'est qu'une projection de notre propre soi. It looks as if everything is a projection from ourself. Yes. Yes. Good and bad. Rumi dit. Rumi. Rumi dit. Rumi says. J'ai misé mon corps et mon âme, my body and my soul, pour jouer au dé avec l'aimé, to play uh, dice, <laughs> to play dice with uh, my beloved. Yes. Si je gagne, si je perds, if je I suis win, à lui. If I lose, I'm with him. Si je gagne, il est à moi. If I win, he is mine. Il a dit aussi, fais de moi un trou de flûte. Il a aussi dit, make of myself a hole in a flute. Pour que ton vent passe à travers moi. So that your wind go f- goes through me. Et puis jouer ta mélodie. And may play your melody. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Alhamdulillah. Merci beaucoup. Yeah. Is it impolite or improper to say such a thing? Moi aussi je t'aime. Moi aussi je t'aime. Also, you said, me also I love. Okay, okay. 
I'll just take you one, you were to say. Come. Mm -hmm. Some tra translation, French, please. French. Okay. Euh, je voulais de tout mon cœur remercier. I wanted to thank you from all my heart. Euh, votre grâce, parce que il y a que vous qui peut. Animer mon être tout entier. It's only through your grace that can feed my whole being. Il y a que vous. It's only you. Je vous remercie euh, tous parce qu'il n'y a qu'un. I thank everybody because there's just only one. Tout ce qu'ils ont dit c'était moi. All that they said was me. J'ai besoin de vous remercier infiniment. I need to thank you infinitely. Je, je m'en vais demain, mais je ne m'en vais pas. I go tomorrow, but I don't go. Merci de mon cœur. Only thanks from my heart. Yes, thank you. Thank you from my heart. C'est seulement un cœur. It's only her heart. C'est seulement votre cœur en moi. It's only your heart in me. There really is only one heart, and it's he. By your grace, I am. This body is only a microphone so that you can speak to God. Someone coming today? <sighs> you see, there must be something about you to come on such a hot day, hot day to sit so many people um, to listen to such things <coughs> for myself i feel if it were not for beings like yourself then I have no reason to be here on this planet. Mm. Mm. Because there's nothing I want. But this uh, become my joy.
Verva, lots of love. I send you everything that is necessary for your well-being and all your full health, recovery, and lots of love. Too.